and I spent $30,000 on this rough parcel of opal and this was the only stone that was in the parcel. Oh no! <laughs> G'day and welcome to Black Opal Direct. My name's Justin. Hi, I'm Melinda. Welcome to Black Opal Direct. N no, that, that's my line. Well, you're not doing a very good job, so move over. It's my show. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Here's your cup of tea. Thank you. <laughs> well, sorry about that, guys. It was Melinda's idea. That was not my idea. That was yours. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, please give Melinda a warm welcome. Um, she's new to the team and um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of her and she's got a lot more talent than just putting me in my place. <laughs> We'd love your support in the comments and if you haven't already, please hit subscribe or like our videos. So today we're going to talk about a few of my collection stones that I've kept for many years. Um, and some of them have some really cool stories to them. So Melinda's going to ask me a few questions about them and I'm going to let you know um, because I love Opal so much that um, I've kept some for many years and there's some really nice fine stories behind them. And um, that's what becomes heirlooms. is something that has a lot of history to it and that's what I'm trying to create with my family and my son for the future. Okay, let's start with this one. Where well, did you get this one from? This one is probably my one of my two top most cherished stones. Um, this one was in my dad's collection 40 years ago and I always had my eye on it because um, it's one of the best crystal opals I've ever seen. Uh, it's so clear uh, and it's double sided and the pattern just reminds me of my dad, you know. Um, every time I was little and I would say, Dad, can you get your collection out? And I'd look at it, I'd always pick this stone up and it was just so precious to me that even today when he's now passed away, I look at it and I see him every single time. And uh, it's so precious. I will never sell this one ever, ever, ever. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Um, let's move on to this one. <laughs> Where does this one come from? Well, this one is one of my biggest learning curves in life. <laughs> Um, when I was working for my dad, he was an opal cutter back in the early days and we were buying parcels of opal and my dad said, at, oh, I think I was about 20, he said, I think it's time for you to go to Lightning Ridge by yourself and buy your first parcel of opal. And um, so I went up there and I saw some opal miners and they had a big tray of opal, rough opal sitting there. And this piece was glinting out of, the, out of one of the uh, pieces of rough opal. And I thought, there's enough money in there. It's got to be great. And I spent $30,000 on this rough parcel of opal. And this was the only stone that was in the parcel. Oh, no! <laughs> so I was, a bit, uh, I was a bit upset. But I did also decide, because it's one of the most top crystals I've ever found, uh, I decided to keep it to remind me of that, that very time. Um, and it is one of the biggest learning curves I could have ever gone through so I do cherish this stone too so I, I will be keeping this one um, and handing it to my son later on in life What uh, did your well. dad say? He shook his head <laughs> He shook his head and he said that's how you learn Well, that's and a very expensive lesson <laughs> It is an expensive lesson but I think everybody who plays with um, takes a risk in life. Um, mm. You always make mistakes um, and you don't learn until you make those mistakes. Yeah, until you make the really big ones. Yeah, so <laughs> the doozies. <laughs> that's a precious one to me. Now this is my favourite so far. Yes. Tell me about this one. <laughs> well, this one and this one came out of the same pocket in um, a field called the Three Mile Field up in Lightning Ridge. And now this one is also 40 years old and was in my dad's collection too and uh, it is probably, it's probably the most red and brightest crystal I've ever owned. So my dad let me put it in a pinky ring. Um, it's a little bit tight on me nowadays, but I still, I cherish it so much. And um, it sits right alongside that gorgeous crystal opal that um, my dad had in his collection. He also had black opals in his collection, but I'm a, I'm a bit partial to crystals um, because 
they just have so much depth it's crazy and especially when you get them double sided um, the 3D I have a thing about 3D patterning and I'd mention it a lot in my in my videos but uh, it really means a lot to me and I just love to see color on color it's the best okay. <laughs> and then what about this one here well this one um, is quite special and it's probably the most recent to my collection this um, I have named the stone Riverview because I, I used to um, get supply of opal from a, a man called Dave and Dave was a very good friend and as we decided to he got unfortunately got cancer and as we decided to make a deal on this last parcel of opal he died in the process and um, I managed to still be able to pay him for the for the parcel and we uh, we did business but um, unfortunately Dave has gone and I had a cheers with Dave, uh, for Dave when I went barramundi fishing up the top end in Darwin um, and I miss him greatly he's a great guy and so I've named this stone kept, I'm keeping this in my collection um, and it's called Riverview where he lived it's so cool that all of the different stones signify a person yes almost, yes so. oh that's well that's yeah yeah exactly right let's get one of the darker ones is this a black opal that is definitely a tell black me about opal. this one well this one was um it was probably about seven years ago it was shown to me in a, in a rough oak, rough piece and there is a video on youtube of me cutting this stone and um i didn't expect it to be as bright and as strong as this and the reason why i kept this stone is because in black opal my favorite colors are blue and green and when they're this bright um, because I love fishing I love the ocean I love the forest I love everything about um, those colors are part of my life so I uh, I had to keep this stone because it's just so strong and bright and, <laughs> and if I ever get another ring made that will be the choice Ball for sure. <laughs> Very right. good. Let's go into another one. What does this one mean anything to you? Is it? It's it. It actually this one probably means the least in the in the lot. Um, but it's just because the green in it was so unique and the darkness is so unique and it's got a high dome to it, really nice cut. I decided to um, just to keep it out because. Sometimes you just find stones that just speak to you, mm. and this one definitely spoke to me. And um, every time I look at it, I just think, wow, how different that is from every other stone. So I am inclined to keep that one. Yeah. I might sell it when I went down later down in the track, but um, yeah, I just love it because it's just different, really mm. different. And seeing so many stones across the years, when someone's when one stands out to you yes you have to hold on to it <laughs> yes yeah well my wife actually it happened to my wife she saw a boulder opal not a black opal but a boulder once upon a time and she really wanted to um buy it but then decided not to and for the last 15 years she's brought up that boulder oh. opal saying that she missed out and that was the one that she really wanted Damn. and it spoke to her so if you if you ever do have an opal that actually speaks to you um, do your best to to snap it up if you can afford it because they don't come along very often when you get a stone that's really really um really grabs you by the heart yeah mm. um are there any ones like that for you any ones that got away uh there is many yeah <laughs> i couldn't really pinpoint one um but yeah there is many over the years that I actually couldn't afford yeah <laughs> didn't have the money to just go here you go I'll take that yeah uh, because some of the better gems are just so sublime but they they fetch quite high prices and my collection is something that I've built up over the years and um, there is quite a lot of value to it and it is I guess also to me it's like a separate superannuation fund um, I slowly build on it and I like to see those stones grow and so there is some value there and um, hopefully I won't be selling them all when I decide I'm retiring and that's not for a long time so don't worry um, yeah I only just started so <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm leaving now. Uh, I'm going on a world trip. You have to look after well, the I'm business. Well, yeah, I'm staying here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crikey. Well, I reckon that's probably enough. We could, if, um, if you actually like what we're doing and talking about stones, a little bit more history about the opal, we can go through the stock as well that's online and I can talk about where these opals come from in Lightning Ridge. If you like this kind of thing, let us know in the comments. Um, that would be really cool. Yeah, it's always nice to have the emotional connection or the story behind yeah. the stone. I think it makes it mean a lot more. Yeah, and that does whenever somebody sends me a picture of their opal that's come from their family, they usually tell me a story behind it too. And it's so they always have some kind of a story. And we cut the stone and we make it beautiful, but the real story comes from when that stone is sold and gone to another family and then it goes through generations. That's when the real story starts. Also, if you have any burning questions um, that you want to know, you let us know because we can also make a video because I can guarantee your question, there's thousands of other people asking the same question too. So yeah. let us know in the comments or send us a private message, whichever way you'd like to do it. And make sure you subscribe, it really, it really is appreciated. Um, and yeah. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That's my line! <laughs>